Welcome to From the 55. On today's show, we'll talk about the big train, the first big game, the player of the week, Don and Dirty, and of course, the interview. But first, let's talk about the big game. When the Governor General donated the silverware to recognize the top amateur rugby club in the country, the Euro Grey could never have envisioned what it might become. The 1908 Tigers may have covertly put their name on it, but the first cup in 1909 went to the University of Toronto. In the fall air of Toronto's Rosedale Field, the opponents from Parkdale clashed in front of 3,800 official fans, but the count was really 11,000. The Blues badly beat the Canoe Club from Parkdale 26-6. Harry Griffith had already coached the Blues past the Big Four champions from Ottawa and used Smurley Lawson, Hugh Gale and Billy Folds to take the $48 trophy and give Toronto the first of many Grey Cups. Immigrant families have come to this country for centuries looking for a better life and they have always found a way to integrate themselves into the sport that is currently taking place, whether it be hockey or of course the game of Canadian football. Don? Thanks Todd. Today on Don and Dirty, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Kashema boys. I first met Hakim and Alain Kashema when they came to the Burlington Braves to play football. A strike in the Board of Education where they attended eliminated high school football for that season, so looking for a place to play, the two boys came from Brampton down to Burlington. They were bookends on our defensive line, both about six foot four, 230 odd pounds, with sub four five speed, just absolutely incredible athletes. So it was no surprise when Hakeem, the older brother, went to the University of Connecticut and played four years for UConn, and then younger brother Alan played from 99 to 2003 for the University of Michigan Wolverines. The third boy, Fernand, ended up going to Western Michigan to play for the Broncos. He finished his career some three seasons ago and has spent the last two years with the Calgary Stampeders. Now along comes Adonje, the youngest of four brothers, who goes by the nickname Bromley, who is now at Eastern Michigan, where he's a redshirt freshman looking to get a lot of playing time this year with the Eastern Michigan Eagles. The very interesting thing about the Kashema boys is that the whole family, four boys, three girls, and their parents, emigrated from the Congo in 1979, and Hakeem, the eldest, was only 10 years old. Some eight or nine years later, they're playing football, and all four boys, large defensive ends averaging over six foot four and better than 250 pounds with incredible speed have made a name for themselves in NC2A football. Hakeem and Alam both had uh, brief careers in the NFL before ultimately coming back to the CFL. Hakeem settled with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, had a disastrous leg break on Labor Day and that pretty much summed up his career. He's now coaching high school football up in Brampton. Alain played with Montreal for a number of years and then finished up his career two years ago back in Calgary or last year in Calgary where he played part of the season with his younger brother Fernand who is now on the, on the injury reserve list with the Stampeders in this 2010 season. So come along in the next couple of years will be young Idonje who up until recently has gone by the nickname Bromley. Look for him to make some great noise and be a top CFL draft pick. It's interesting how the nuts don't fall too far from the tree. Thanks, Don. Uh, certainly, we have scoured the entire country, at least Troy Islakar has, has gone over the tapes, and he has discovered who the player of the week is this week. Now, there are 400,000 players playing either touch, tackle, or flag football in Canada, but there is only one from the 55 player of the week. Meet this week's player. ago they were all talking about this kid and then he turned into this kid. Here at the 55 we may have found the next kid for football. Let's head out across Lake Ontario to Belleville, Ontario out back behind Quinty Secondary School at the Paul Patton Field for a running back that straps on the pads for the Belleville Minor Football League. Here's 14 year old Hayden Deacon, a force to be reckoned with on the Bay Shore Credit Union Chargers. Deacon led his team with a pair of TDs in last week's 30-0 championship win over Bancroft. Hayden was selected league MVP and highlighted his season with two five-touchdown games. 
His coaches say he's almost impossible to break down, fights for extra yardage, and has breakaway speed. The most important quality Deacon possesses is his team-first attitude and that he always remains humble when receiving accolades. Congratulations to this week's Canadian Football Hall of Fame Player of the Week, Hayden Deacon. There is a whole lot of stuff in the attic of the Canadian football consciousness and here at the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. Who takes care of it? Megan Sturgeon. Now, I've always been interested in sports. I've always watched Canadian football. Um, I mean, growing up, I remember the 91 Grey Cup with Pinball and uh, Matt Dunnigan. So I've always been a CFL fan. So. It is definitely uh, a big job. And as you said, a big uh, responsibility, because really what we're doing is trying to preserve that history of um, not just Canadian football, but it's Canadian history that we're preserving. But um, it's fascinating, and that's what I love about it, is uh, uh, you're always hearing new stories and uh, finding new artifacts from um, our oldest artifacts go back to the mid-1800s, so it's just a, a fascinating history. Uh, well, sometimes, if it's just something I found in the basement, uh, like you can't believe you found it. Um, I know one example is I found a Wayne Harris jersey down there, so I saw a Calgary jersey, number 55, and you think, this could be a Wayne Harris jersey, and you get excited, and then you do the research, and you find out it actually is, and you're even more excited. So it's, um, it's definitely great, and then to get things like that on display is a great feeling. Uh, we did an exhibit at Grey Cup last year in Calgary, and we're doing an exhibit at Touchdown Atlantic. That's what's so great about them, is that we can get these artifacts on display at the public, uh, and at different uh, cities across the country as well. Canada has always had big sports heroes, Wayne Gretzky, Steve Nash, but the name Lionel Conniger also belongs amongst those greats, and although Conniger never played basketball, he played just about everything else. The big train may have ended his career using words in the House of Commons, but at age 12 he bounded into football with the Toronto Capitals junior team and won four consecutive Toronto City Championships. He vaulted to the Ontario Rugby Football Union and in 1921 played for the Grey Cup winning Toronto Argonauts. He punched in 15 points in the big game. Canada's male athlete of the half century would play pro hockey, lacrosse, soccer, boxing and wrestling. Even in that Grey Cup victory, Conniger left the game early to get to a hockey game. It was his talents on the field that earned him a place as a member of the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. Thanks for watching From the 55. We will continue to bring all the information stored here in the attic of Canadian football, the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. Keep tuning us in right here on the Hall of Fame website. This is Todd Crocker from the 55.